Hello, listener, and you welcome back to another episode of EV Unbounded. As always, I'm your loving host, EV Jane, and this is my podcast about showcasing all the awesome women, lady bosses who are breaking down the barriers we are real and unbounding in this space. Today's guest is another amazing, kick-ass lady boss. She's Oh my gosh, she's doing everything, and was, I'm always so surprised all the achievement that she'll have achieved so far. Every single time when I talk to her, and there's more, and there's more, and there's more. Um, she's a former congr- um, congressional candidate for Nevada Fourth District. She was in the pageant. In fact, I think she was a Miss Nevada, and then she's also a real estate investor, and then she's a founder and started this um, cupcake that infused with alcohol, which that's something I just find now today. I mean, I know she have a cupcake, but I never know what kind of cupcake it was. So I'm so glad that I'm having her today and she can tell us more about it. Um, so pretty much she started her business career working in top of Las Vegas law firm. So she's also a lawyer and specializing in business litigation. I do know that about her because when we had dinner um, in Vegas, I remember she told me she was also a lawyer and I'm just, again, like I said, every single time when I talk to her, she always surprised me with more, um, all the achievements that she have accomplished. And she then went on to create a company of her own. So I would like to introduce Lisa Sun Sultan to the EB Unbounded family today. Hi, Lisa. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining me today. So obviously you have so many success under your belt. And like I said before, every single time when I have this conversation with you and it just within like five minutes, you come up with something and then I'm like, what? I didn't know that about you. And that was amazing. What? And you do this and you did that. Wow. <laughs> so I just want to like, I don't know how am I going to start because there's so many things about you. Well, I, I, I think is so amazing and also encourage other women and give other women idea and then you'll drive um so let's start off thinking from listening and work our way up i know you went to law school and you yes. are also professionally modeling at the time what was this, what how that even how does two combine together and how was that for you yeah yeah so i was so lucky to have the opportunity to model all during college and law school I was always a full-time student. School was always my priority. Of course, coming from like Asian tiger mom family, right? Um, School was always a priority, always a full-time student. But um, yeah, I had the opportunity to start modeling. And um, in Florida at the time, which is where I went to law school, um, down in Miami, I mean, there's so many beautiful women in Miami. But at the time in 2006, there were like three Asian models. There was like no one. Yeah. <laughs> we were we were so underrepresented there. And actually, that was a huge advantage for me because I got a chance to take on bookings and, um, you know, be part of, of so many different bookings and, and gigs because um, there was just such a huge lack of Asian models there. No, the that, then that's really awesome. Like you do representing Asian, Asian women. I, and, and I, that's, we need more, right? We need more diversity. Totally. And so you were starting modeling even when you were in law school. Okay, got it. And how that yeah. how that just come about? Like you were in Miami for law school, and then someone hit you up. And how does yes, exactly. So um, when I was in college at the University of Arizona, I got asked to be in um, just like a, a college coed like calendar basically, and it was um, I held like I had like a U of A like football jersey on, but like the football, right? Oh, wow. um, okay, yeah. So I did a little bit of that, and so uh-huh. then when I moved to Florida to go uh-huh. to school. Um, the agent that I had worked with in Arizona was like, Hey, you should reach out to the agency there in Miami beach at Ford. And so I was like, sure. So I just like waltz into the Ford modeling agency in South beach. And they were just like, you're small. They're like, get out of here. Like, yeah, but they're like, happened, yeah. yeah, they're like, you're way too small. Like, what are you talking about? And I was like, Oh, so it was like, I guess kind of my first time dealing with like actual, just like flat out rejection. Uh-huh. Um, And so I went back to them and I was like, look, I've already been modeling. So I already have a portfolio. So you don't have to like spend money or like invest in me to Mm -hmm. help me get gigs. Um, And the way it was structured at the time was that they took 20% of whatever you booked. And since they didn't have to pay for my portfolio photos, because I already had them, I said, why don't you just sign me to like a six month contract? And if I book work, great. You guys make 20%. If I don't book anything because I'm too small or whatever it is you guys just said, um, then there's no 
it doesn't cost you anything. Wait, right? how do you even come up with that? that idea? That's really good that you went and you didn't just take rejection and just like, ooh, you know, move yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. But- I was just kind of like, what? I was like, you know, what? I was just like, okay. Like, I, I don't know. I think it was just me not wanting to take no for an answer. And so I went back to them with that proposal and mm-hmm. they were just like, all right, like whatever. And then I started booking work and they were like, wait a second. And then fast forward, you know, I, I worked for them for three and a half years. <laughs> That's awesome. And then, and then I think, wait, I, I, I know I kind of jumped the topic a little bit, but I know when we have dinner, one of the strong influence is your mom. And, yeah. you know, I, I follow you on your social media and everyone you guys should follow Lisa. I'm, I'm going to give all of you her social media handle later on. But she always gives a really good tip for women, like what she, they should do. And I think one of the big influence that she always mentioned was her mother. So has your mom always been like that? Is that how you were raised? Like you're just so business minded all the time. Like even with that, <laughs> you don't just take no for an answer. You come up with something that to get your feet in there you know, in the model yeah, and to totally. think outside the box and have the courage to do so. I mean, is that, um, I mean, where'd you get that idea? Was it because your mom or is this like a mentor that, that guy you do this? Yeah. I, you know, I grew up with just like such a strong mom. I think like a lot of, of us who have, you know, like immigrant parents, right. Or immigrant mom, like my mom is just such a strong, fearless woman. And um, I think just that, that personality trait of, you know, just like drilling down on a goal or um, an objective, and then you just stay focused on it. And you really try to figure out how you can achieve it. Even if there are obstacles or no's in the beginning, Mm -hmm. um, you just kind of keep at it. Yeah. And then are you, are you like, would your mom was open to what career path you choose or, you know, did it, because I have an Asian mom, right? So Asian mom's like, yes. you become a doctor, lawyer. I mean, is exactly. that the reason you yeah, choose law school? Yeah, those were the school? two options. Okay. Yeah, so make you, no mistake. Yeah. <laughs> so, make no mistake. Like, those were the two options, be a doctor or a lawyer. And this is like junior high school. This is like middle school <sighs> that I had to choose. Am I going to be a doctor or a lawyer? And I always gravitated towards reading and writing. It's uh, skills that are innate to me. They come really easily and I enjoy them. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I guess I'll be a lawyer. And so literally from middle school onward, I knew that I was going to go to law school and that I was going to work in law. And how that (laughs) even lead you to, I I know how you lead to modeling, but then I also know that you also a pageant and you're Miss Nevada, right? Okay. Yes, Good. I was the first Miss Nevada of Asian descent, actually. Awesome, so that was yay. really exciting. Yeah. Oh, that wow. was tremendous. Um, so much fun and just an incredible experience. I did nearly 500 community appearances, volunteering in schools, reading in hospitals, working with nonprofits. Um, I did a boys and girls club tour of the whole state. Um, I was I spent a lot of time in like rural areas. Um, and it was awesome. It was just such an amazing experience. And I, I highly recommend anyone who wants to just, you know, not only get involved in their community, but also engage in like severe personal development, personal growth, do a pageant. Like it's, <laughs> how do you even get the idea of doing a pageant? Was it in law school yeah. or when you were practicing? So my mom is actually a former Miss Korea. Oh, wow. Um, yes. And so the fall of 2013, she called me and she was like, are you competing for Miss Las Vegas? And I was like, I don't know. I just started a company, like kind of busy, you know? And she was like, well, you're getting ready to age out. So at that time, the Miss America system, you aged out 24. Miss mm-hmm. USA was 26. And Miss United States, the age cutoff was 29. So at that time, I was 28 years old. And my mom was just like, what is happening? She was like, you, like, <laughs> <laughs> you're getting ready to age out. And I was like, oh, my God. So it was like total drama. I had to like buckle down, hire a pageant coach. I mean, it was like, it was crazy. Like I was already, I was working at the law firm. I, we had started Sin City Cupcakes at this point. Like it was so not on my radar until it was. And then I had to like go all in and and hopefully win because it was my last opportunity to get an opportunity at a state title. Was that the first time you ever entered pageant? Uh, the first time I did a pageant was uh, the Miss Arizona America pageant, which is the feeder into Miss America. Um, I was 19 years old in college okay. and I placed second runner up there. Oh, wow. Um, mm-hmm, so it was awesome. But then I, I took a big long break because I moved to Florida. I was in school. I was in modeling. Yeah. Um, and so just time just 
passed, right? And then I moved to Vegas and after graduation, I started working and so time just passed and I didn't realize that I was coming up on age eligibility until my mom kindly reminded me. (laughs) But oh my God, just by you telling me all the stuff you did, how you even jungle all the stuff. It's amazing. It was, it was a crazy time, but I'm so grateful. I have a really amazing partners who are, you know, obviously people who work with me within the companies, we have great staff, great teams. And, um, before even doing the pageant, Mm -hmm. um, I told them, Hey, like, this is, this is what I want to do. And if I win, this is the type of year I want to have, or I'm going to be very involved in the community and doing a lot of community service work. Um, so it's physically going to take me away from the companies, but I I will be like the best brand ambassador we've ever had, right? Like I will be marketing the heck out of, our companies and everybody was so supportive. They were like, you have to do this. This is going to be so fun. And so even at the pageant, um, the night I won at the Miss Nevada pageant that year, I had over 60 people in the audience, family and friends and business partners, um, all cheering me on. And um, it was amazing. I was, I'm so grateful to have such a great support system. Oh, wow. Wait, so how you got into the Sin City Cupcake from being a lawyer yeah. and you have this business? Yes. So Sin City Cupcakes was a total like accident. Um, it was just a fun side hustle that my co-founder with that, Danielle, who she and I met in the modeling industry okay. uh, years ago in Florida and uh-huh. just became great friends. Fast forward, um, I was living in Vegas, working at the law firm mm-hmm. and she and I were catching up on the phone. Like, hey girl, what have you been up to? And she was still living in Florida at the time. And she told me she had been making these alcohol cupcakes. And I'm like, that's an amazing idea. That yeah. is such a great idea. You've got to move to Vegas. I'll help you start the company. Like I made all the mistakes in the beginning that a founder makes, right? Like I was like, I just bought my house in Summerland. Come move in with me. We'll start the company. Like it was crazy. <sighs> and she moved from Florida. She moved also. Hey. She moved, yeah, she moved. And I was still working at the law firm. So for the first 18 months uh-huh. of Sin City Cupcakes operations, I was still working full time at the law firm, okay. five and a half days a week. And then like my nights and weekends was my side hustles. My nights and weekends, I was literally baking, running deliveries, setting up events. I mean, I, I do, doing all the like catering, we were doing everything. And it was crazy. I worked seven days a week for like four years straight. Like oh it was my crazy. God. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you do it, but that, that's really cool for your co-founder. I'm also a really good friend of yours. And yeah. it's, that's just telling you, you don't know where your pal leads you and who you're going to meet, right? Never. Yeah, exactly. I, I didn't even know how to bake before we started the company. Uh-huh. I had to learn how to uh-huh. bake. Um, and I, I started it because I was like, that's a great idea. Right? It, it is a great idea. I was like passionate about baking because yeah. I was like, oh, I love baking. That wasn't why I started the company. Yeah. Right. I started the company because I was like, that is a damn good idea. And I know that we live in a place like a tourist market like Vegas. We have 44 million tourists fly through our airport every year. Yeah. Right. If you could just capture 10 percent of that. Like, and, and then I don't even know any good. cupcake that infused with alcohol. That's really interesting, especially for yeah. Vegas. It fit. It's perfect for Vegas, right? This is where people come to overspend, overindulge, buy and do things you're not going to buy and do at home. Yeah. Right? Every bachelor, pre- think about every reason you've ever come to Vegas before. It's someone's bachelor birthday, party, bachelor someone's party. event, someone's bachelorette, someone, whatever, yeah. right? Even this for the moment girl's trip. Exactly. It's a celebratory thing, I would right? Do that. So, <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, do you, so how, 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 okay, so how long did you running this? Are you still running involved actively? Yeah, so this is our, this is our 10th year of business. Oh my gosh. Now. Okay. What since he, I know it's crazy. Um, luckily for everybody, I don't bake anymore. Oh, thank um, God. We have great, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> we have really great pastry chefs and uh-huh. like bakers who are far more advanced than I could ever hope to be, um, who work with us. And it's just, it's so much fun. Like actually tomorrow night, we're catering an event at the link, which is a hotel Yes, uh, on the strip. And uh, we're doing a, a big event there with Las Vegas weekly magazine. Um, so it's just fun. We get to be part of like every cool event in Las Vegas. And then what makes you decide to move to Vegas? I mean, I know we talked about that before, but I kind of yeah. want to let listen to know what made you to move from Arizona and then to, well, I know I for am, school, yeah. you're right. but mm-hmm. it's like from all these fun places. I mean, that's the reason you pick Vegas. I mean, what make you choose the next destination? Yeah. So I was living in Florida, right? Mm -hmm. Went to school there. I was living in South beach, um, which is a great place to be in your early twenties. Yes. Like fantastic. I, I, the best time. Um, and learned a lot too. Like I grew so much living in Miami. Um, 
but one of my main priorities, um, my family lives in Arizona, so I did want to be closer to them. And Florida was just so far yeah. from them. Um, so that was like tough, you know, I'm an only child. Um, so I did want to be closer and it was one of those things where just, again, kind of on the personal development side and like growth side, right? Like at that time in South beach, um, it was just a, a different atmosphere. And I just didn't see that there was going to be a lot of like growth for me on the personal side. Right. Like at, at that time, South beach, at least in your early twenties, like it's not a place for like monogamous relationships and like, you know, a place to like build a family. Like mm-hmm. it's not, um, it's not conducive to that. And, um, I felt like I had like done it right. Mm-hmm. Like I lived in South beach. I lived in a built a high rise right on the water. Like beautiful. I, mm-hmm. yeah, like I, I got a chance to like do it and do it right. And so I was looking for kind of next chapter and um, I looked at LA, I looked at Phoenix, I looked at Vegas because I wanted to come kind of West coast ish again, Mm -hmm. to be close to my family. And at that time, this is 2010. So at that time, Vegas was like hit hard by the recession, Mm. right? Like I, I, it was the recession anyway, but like Vegas was hit super hard. So rent, gas, groceries, everything was like insanely cheap. Like, I couldn't believe it. Like, moving from South Beach to Las Vegas at that time, I was like, what is this magical place where everything's half off? Like, (laughs) what is this place, you know? Obviously, I'd been to Vegas as, like, a tourist, you know, on vacation. But to live here, I couldn't believe it, like, how cheap it was, the cost of living. And so I was like, you know what? Like, why not? Like, Mm -hmm. why not give it a try, right? And so I moved to a high-rise on the Strip. Um, in 2010 and again, rent was insanely cheap and started working in a firm. And at that time, as you can imagine, because it's a recession, business litigation and business bankruptcy were booming. Like, like w- we couldn't keep the files in fast enough, right? Like wow. it was so, so, so busy. And so it was amazing. So that was like the best opportunity I could have had to like jump in both feet first, get a ton of work experience, like literally learn by trial by fire because there was so much business happening and activity happening mm-hmm. because Vegas was in the recession. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 I don't know if the listener is going to notice that about you, but I noticed every time I'm talking to you, I just love the way you think because you're always <laughs> trying to, you always think about outside the box and then you don't take um, the situation or the environment like, uh oh, this is bad. Then no, I'm not going there. You actually look at it in a bigger picture and see what you can do with it. And then you've been doing that with all always your an stuff. advantage, right? There's always like it, it's it's by camera, right? If if there's yeah. a bad situation, there's gonna be a good one. Like if there's a disadvantage, there's gonna be an advantage. Like mm-hmm. it's literally like the way of the world, right? It's it's yeah. the laws of nature, it's the laws of science. Like there's always a, a a, a, you know, a counter and then counter opposite, right? But so, it's like amazing how you come up with all that in such an early age, right? Because when we were 20, 30. I'm old now, but. No, I mean, seriously, <laughs> even like now, I'm older than you and I'm still trying to figure things out. Like, but you, even throughout yeah, your I'm whole life. Out. Like, no, you come up with <laughs> really good idea. Out. You know, your mom is awesome. <laughs> my mom's amazing. I'm so seriously. grateful to have her. Yeah. She's like, my mom, my mom's extra, but. But yeah. It's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, she really pushing you. She gave me a really good idea. But and even just you, because some of it, you come up with the idea on your own, like moving to Vegas, you really thought about it. And I can't imagine like when I was early 20, would come up with all this idea, you know, to, to think that way. It's like, oh, this, you gotta listen advantage. to your gut. Yeah, like, li- listen to your gut. I think that's one of like the best pieces of advice that that I've been given, because we especially as like, you know, successful mm-hmm. kind of overachievers, right? Like we always think, we're always thinking, right? right? And yeah. and we can think ourselves right out of an opportunity or think ourselves right out of, you know, mm-hmm. name your situation. So, you know, whatever, really try to listen to your gut feeling and pay attention to what that first in- instinct is. And sometimes it's not going to hit the mark, but most of the time it's going to be on par with with what you should be doing. So, and that's another thing I notice a lot of time, I, especially with women, we have really strong intuition, but somehow we don't mm-hmm. trust it, you know? So we don't. Yeah. We're like programmed. Yeah. We're programmed like not to trust it. Right. Because we're told to, well, you know, you've got to, you've got to wait till you have more experience or you need to ask someone who knows more than you, or you need to, what like we're told that by society, yeah. I think. Right. Whereas like, I think with men, if they just have an idea, yeah. People are like applauding it, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, 
we we've got a business going and we still don't feel like we're ready. Yeah. So do you always very trusting? Do you always listen to your gut or do you have a, do you want to do some progress before you reach that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I really do try to pay attention to whatever the first gut instinct and first intuition is. Um, I do think partnering up with people who have complementary skill sets and, and compliment, com- almost complementary instincts to you sometimes is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm the type that like, if I hear something and I think it's a good idea, I'm off to the races. Like I will jump in both feet first and st- just start executing and right. kind of figure it out as I go. Yeah. Right. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs are that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's good to surround yourself with someone else who's at least going to be like, Hey, like, can you put that on pause for 24 hours? Or mm-hmm. like, can you like take care of this priority first before we move on to that one? Like, yeah. It, it helps to just have another voice mm-hmm. and sometimes you override them. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah. other times you're like, actually, yeah, like that is, you know what, let me hit, hit the brakes for 24 hours. And for me, I like to think about, look, if it's something that's like on my mind and I can't stop thinking about it, that means I need to do something. Mm, that's a good test. If you have that's something test, in your right? mind and then you can't stop mm-hmm. thinking about it, you can't stop thinking, right. Like you can't stop thinking about it. And like other things remind you of it you keep revisiting it, mm. then like do something about it. Yeah, I like that. Okay, that's a good test. So mm-hmm. do you do you still practice in law right now or no? No, not anymore. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, anything that comes up with um, with the businesses, right, with my companies, of course, um, you know, I, I'm kind of first eyes on it. And then we, of course, have counsel as well mm-hmm. uh, for the companies. But um, I mean, it's still the skill set that I utilize, this, you know, contracts, negotiation, like, right. It's still skill sets that I utilize to this day. Yeah, because right now you also got into real estate investment, right? So you want to tell us more about that one? How you leave from lawyer? Well, I can see lawyer cupcake. That was just, that was. <laughs> I don't know how you balance both. And then so now you're into real estate investment. Tell us about that. Yes. So um, I own the Engel and Vokers Real Estate Brokerage for okay. Las Vegas, Henderson, and Summerlin. Um, and what I love about real estate investing in particular is that it's truly a way to build long-term wealth. And I tell this to our agents all the time. I say, look, you will get rich helping other people buy and sell real estate, but you will get wealthy owning real estate. Mm. So I really push upon and and press upon our agents to become real estate investors themselves. Um, I just think it's incredibly important to own real estate um yeah i know that's some of the that's that's advice you also you also give out on your social media i love the fact that you always try to help other people and giving the business tip and life tip and then i remember one of your social media was like telling people how to invest and even if they don't have a lot of money up front they can yep. still invest mm-hmm. yeah yes. thank you yeah, that's you, you just have to get started yeah i think it's it's incredibly important especially for women i think you know for women who are pursuing financial independence um, you know, owning real estate and investing in real estate is one of the best ways to achieve that while still working your day job, mm-hmm. right? Or, or starting your business or, or doing your side hustle. Um, you can also be building, building a real estate portfolio on the side. When did you realize real estate is the way to go? So my parents um, were investing in real estate while I was growing up Mm -hmm. and it was just a side hustle for them. My mom actually owns a hair salon and my dad was military his entire career. So, um, so real estate was simply a a side hustle for them, right? A way to, to build more income and build wealth. Um, And they started their portfolio with a single, like single family residential home um, when I was in elementary school that they rented out to a long-term tenant, right? Mm -hmm. It was just, it was a house they bought. They rented out to a long-term tenant. I remember in elementary school going with my dad. So my dad was like a handyman as well, right? When you when you yeah. self-manage a property, you know, you, <laughs> you pretty much have to do yourself. everything. Yeah, you have to do everything. Yeah, and so I remember going with my dad over to that house because, uh, you know, the tenant had a toilet issue, whatever it was, you know. And I'd go with my dad, and he was like, "Mr. Fix It." Um, and so they started their real estate portfolio with just that single family home and then bought another one and then bought another one. And like, they just, they grew their real estate portfolio slow and steady for the entire time I was growing up. Mm-hmm. And, um, I realized from that, wow, like they really, they built something really special for themselves. And they took some risks. Um, when I was in middle school, they bought their first commercial building. By the time I was in high school, they were invested in multifamily and apartment complexes. And so just kind of seeing that progression, 
and realizing that like, hey, you've got different money coming in from different places, right? You've got your day job, which is my dad military, right? My, mm-hmm. my mom like said she owned her hair salon and she does hair to this day. So like, you know, she had her clients. Is that she a reason you dad. always look so perfect even with your hair? I mean, you're telling me <laughs> you know, like, you're not I, even I dressed up. Back, I get the back burner on appointments, okay? Like I'm, I'm her least like... She she puts all her real clients like yeah. you know in the appointment book instead of me. So <laughs> you always look so perfect. I mean, even oh, though well, so even though when before we started, Lisa was like, I didn't dress up. I I, I didn't get ready, but <laughs> you look great. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but so that's it, no, like you know, just just seeing them do that side hustle with real estate and realizing, hey, you've got different money coming in from different places at mm-hmm. different times. Like what a way to live. Right. And, um, I realized I, I definitely wanted that by the time I was in my twenties, like I said, I, my first job was just, you know, working at the law firm. Right. And right. so that was, that was my job. I was a salary, salary girl, you know, and, um, I realized, okay, how, how else can I have other money coming in? I started since you cupcakes. Like I said, it was just truly just like, just fun little side hustle project. Okay, I, mean, I need to try this. I, I, Come back to Vegas. Come back to Vegas anytime. Let me know. Okay, because I'm like, hey, how can I get an your cupcake? Will we have dinner? Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. They'll bring you stuff. Of course. Okay, so you started the the cupcake and then the real steak. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and then I think it's good that you are actually practicing as a lawyer because, like you said, even though you don't practice now, the skill that you have definitely help you in so the long helpful. run. Yeah, exactly. so incredibly helpful. I'm glad that I, yeah, because and I, I tell this to like high school and college students that I speak to as well. I tell mm-hmm. them, look, like I, I do think you know, education is very important as long as you're not going into debt. Mm-hmm. Um, so like pursue that if that's what you want to do. I think the JD, your law degree is the best bang for your buck. It's three years after your bachelor's degree. Yeah. And then, and then you get out and you can either go start working, right. Or you could do something entirely. You could go into real estate or go into business or go into something else, but it's still good to have the background to have the degree. It gives you, you know, legitimacy, especially with business people who may not know you, Um, and then I think as well, like, it's okay. Like you don't have to, for example, go to law school and then have that be your career for the next 40 years of your life. Yeah. Like you, you can do that for a period of time and learn as much as you can and then go do something else. You are so wise. Uh, Seriously, Lisa, I I love how the way you think, even just what you just explained about the real estate investment and about the legal skill and think outside the box when the model agency turned you down first, how you came back with it. Uh, I mean, so <laughs> that, like you're small. <laughs> no, but it was really, it's really cool because you're really giving a lot of people advice and encourage them when they're going to do that. Right. So I'm, I guess I follow you on social media. So I see all the tips that you give to other. And then I, I, I realized that you also write stuff from like Forbes and business insider. Yeah. How do you end up writing for them also? Yeah. So kind of just by accident, um, when I was Miss Nevada, uh, Business Insider had reached out to me and they were like, Hey, like somehow we heard about you. Like, so you're like Miss Nevada, but then like, you're also a lawyer and you also have this like business, like yeah. you have a really interesting point of view. We'd love to do a business interview on you and like a profile. And so they did. And, um, that picked up traction. And so then, um, Forbes women reached out and they were like, Hey, we'd love for you to do kind of like a one-off article with us. Um, talking about like, like what business lessons did you learn yeah. from your modeling career? And oh, so modeling the, career. Okay. Yeah. And so the, so the like first article that I did for them was the 10 business lessons I learned from a, a modeling career. Or, and um, so I, I wrote that article for them and it got some traction and people really liked my point of view. And so I just started writing for them like, about, you know, women in business or business tips or real estate tips. Um, and so it's been a fun journey just to share, share knowledge. Yeah. I mean, can we see that still? Can we find that article? Cause even I, I, I wanted to read it to 10 tip. I love those. The simple yeah, tip. Yeah. It's still, it's still floating around out there, you know, over like eight years later, but <laughs> what would yeah. be your best article that you like to write? Like giving tip for other women or yeah, I, I think anytime I can share, like I just wrote one recently actually about how to find undervalued real estate oh, okay. um, that That's just came one. out on Forbes.com. And um, so I like sharing with really like tactical tips. Right. Uh-huh. Like, like actual, like very like detailed, um, tips. I, I really like sharing that because that's the type of information I like to consume. Yeah. Um, I like to feel like I'm learning something. I like to feel like I, I'm 
reading something that I can actually go do. So I, I like to try to share those types of tips if I can. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I, I, I love it too. I love, I love reading your tip. <laughs> like I said, I follow you on social media and I was like, that's a really smart tip. And I was like, I wish I, I, you know, if I want more people to read about the tip that you give because a lot of women oh, would learn a lot from you and it's very inspirational for other women. And you're right. Most women, I mean, you know, we got pretty lucky and then you have a great mom to kind of lead you yeah. and guide you. But there's mm-hmm. a lot of women I talked to that didn't have any of that and didn't right. expose themselves to it. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you were saying earlier, I remember doing our dinner, you were, you were, you, you get to visit a lot of rural area in, in Nevada. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. is that the reason got into politics? Because I know you also was a congressional candidate. So how that even, is that tied to it? Is what happened? Yeah, so that happened totally by accident. Uh, also, okay. <laughs> um, I think politics is like not in the plan, right? It's still not. Um, but I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to run. Um, the reason I ran, so I also own some shipping stores around town. And um, mm. one of my shipping stores is in um, an area that uh, initially when I'd first opened up that store, I was told not to because um, it's right outside the Air Force Base. But the area right outside the base at that time, it was very high crime. Yeah. Um, and met the Metro Police Department, my friends who worked for Metro, they were like, listen, like, this is an area called the Triangle. This is the longest lead times, most amount of calls. Like, go back to Summerlin, honey. Like, you're going to get robbed. And I was just like, that's crazy. And so I opened the store. And the very first day we opened our doors, the very first customers we had were these two little old ladies that live in the apartments across the street. And they were so happy to have a place to buy stamps. Because without us, they'd take a bus to the closest post office, which was legit like 40 minutes away. Oh my gosh. Yes. Like it, like this area, like Walmart pulled out of this area. Like when does Walmart ever leave a neighborhood? Yeah. Like never, right? Uh-huh. And Walmart left this neighborhood because of crime and shoplifting. And like it, it, it truly, like that area at the time, truly was like a food desert. Like it was just crazy the fact there were no resources there. And so I opened up that, shipping store. And to this day, I mean, four years later, it's still open and and thriving. And I just remember kind of looking around and I was like, who's in charge up here? Like who is in charge? And, um, I got in touch with the commissioner of the area at that time, you know, the elected official for the area. And, and I told them, I just said, Hey, I'm a, I'm a small business owner in the area. I'm just introducing myself. Please let me know if you do any community events or community work and we'd love to support it. And we have a store location here, a retail store location. So if you want to host anything here, like maybe like a resume workshop or something, yeah. um, we'd love to help, right? Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, thank you so much for reaching out. You know, we'd love to do something with you. Our assistant will you know, reach back out to you. So like two days later, uh, someone from their office reached out to me and they were like, hey, we'd love your support. We're going to do this community event. I was like, great. Like, what is it? Uh And they were like, oh, we're going to have an ice cream social at the apartment complex. And I was just like, these people don't need ice cream. I was like, this is not, I was like, what? I was like, you need to be doing like a resume workshop or like, like something to help these people. You know what I mean? I was like so annoyed. Yeah. And, and so I was just like, who's in charge up here? And, um, Long story short, I I learned about, you know, at the time, the current congressman for that area and and that he didn't live there anymore. He lived in Virginia. And I was just like, what? what? Like, I was, I was yeah. freaking out. Yeah. And so I was just like, you know what? I have to do something. And so I started calling people and I was like, someone should run for Congress in this area. And of course, everyone was like, Lisa, you should do it. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was cra- you don't even understand. It was so crazy. It was the craziest so you're like, time. You were hoping somebody going to do it. And you're like, Lisa, yes. you should do it. So you yeah. end up taking it. And so I did. <laughs> it was, girl, it was so crazy. I am so grateful that I had the opportunity yes. to run. I literally, it was 10 months of my life from uh, 2019 into 2020. So it was the 2020 cycle that I ran in. Uh-huh. Um, and it was just it just incredible. I met so many amazing people. Um, I did a ton of work uh, in the community, and and um, unfortunately, during the campaign was when COVID happened. So oh. March of twenty twenty, yeah. all like in person stuff ceased, right? Uh-huh. Um, and then uh, the primary election was in June of that year, and I lost the election, um, which was really hard on me because I'm used to 
being rewarded for my hard work, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Like I've just, that's happened to me in every point in my life, right? Like if I work hard at something, I'm rewarded. And, and for me to have worked so hard and, and really like, like prayed about it. Like I really felt like I was going to be the best representative that I I would be the best choice, you know? And, and, um, and I lost the election and that was so, it was so hard for me to like kind of wrap my head around and understand um, and that happened in June of 2020, but again, like, everything's in God's timing. Right. So mm-hmm. like that happened June of 2020. And I was so like, like couldn't comprehend it. Right. I was like, I couldn't digest it. Um, and then two months later, August of 2020, my dad got diagnosed with stage four cancer mm-hmm. that started in his lungs and had spread to his brain and his lymph nodes. And he That's passed right. in October of 2020. It was so fast. So, it was so fast. And had I won the primary election June of that year, mm-hmm. I would have been full court press campaign mode for the general election, which was 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 November of 2020. So, had I won, right? No I would have been. Time. I would have been campaigning, and I would yeah. I would have been in Nevada, not in Arizona, right? Mm-hmm. I would have been campaigning, running around the the whole district, and I know, like I know in my heart, my dad would have lied to me he would have like hid it from me because he was so proud of me yeah. that I was running yeah. and like truly like thought I was going to save America. <laughs> so oh. I just, I know that he would have hid it from me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like downplayed for sure. He wouldn't want you to worry about him and not exactly do right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And, and not like take time away from the campaign. Yeah. Right. He would have yeah. wanted me to be in Vegas in Nevada. And meanwhile, my father obviously was in Arizona. And so had I won, the election, I would have lost that time with him Mm -hmm. to be down in Arizona with him. And like I said, he passed October 19th of 2020. So it's just weeks before the general election. Right. So, I mean, it's just, it all happens in God's timing. Right. And the things that we think we want that we don't get. um, And like, when you don't understand it at that time, like just know that like God truly does have a plan. Yeah. And then I, not that I congratulate you not getting it, but <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I think this is the right thing. It's, yeah, because yeah, it's exactly when your right. family when your it dad. It was the right thing, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Like it was, it was absolutely the right thing that needed to happen in my life at that time, even though I didn't realize it. Right. Yeah. Well, would you ever go back to politics now? <laughs> I, you know, I'm really enjoying being back in private sector, but I, you know, what I have realized though, through that experience, how important it is for private sector, people like you and I, mm-hmm. right. Who are just out here, you know, working, running our businesses, um, how important it is for private sector to come off the sidelines and get involved. And that doesn't mean you have to go run for office. I mean, it's, it's a huge undertaking, but that does mean get involved somehow. Right. right. So that's supporting candidates, supporting private sector candidates, mm-hmm. um, supporting women in politics. Yeah. Right. Um, we've got to be putting our money where our mouth is. And I didn't do that. I wasn't engaged in the political process um, until I jumped in both feet first and was a candidate and was running and realized how important it is for private sector to come off the sidelines and get involved because we as business owners, we have to abide by all these laws and regulations that are like thrust upon us. Right. Mm -hmm. And what we don't realize is that the governing bodies that decide whether it's Congress, whether it's, you know, your, your state house of representatives, they are the ones making the rules. They make the regulations that we as business owners have to abide by. And guess what? Most of these people who are making the rules have never run a business. Right. Have never, have never, seriously, have never run a business. They've never had payroll. They've never had staff to deal with. They've never had health insurance to pay out. They have for no somebody. idea how it's they like in no a real world. I, that's what it calls it. What it takes yeah. to run a business. And we have to abide by the rules that they decide. Like, it's just crazy, right? It doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense. So like private sector has to get involved. Everybody listening, hear that? <laughs> Seriously. Like, no, regardless I agree of with, political affiliation, like yeah. private sector has to get involved. I, I agree with you, Lisa. I, I totally understand it. You're right. And then, and then whatever the rule, whatever the law they passed, then don't sit there and complain because you could have done something. Exactly right. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. you, you could have gotten involved. You could have 
donated to a candidate that you know that is, you, is exactly. that, that you believe in yeah. exactly that has the same values as you or like you know believes in the same causes as you like you can't complain if you don't get involved right exactly so you're still doing all the stuff how you even balance <laughs> your life I mean, no, I really appreciated when I was in Vegas. Yeah. You came out and have dinner with me. That was awesome. Yeah, of but, uh, course. No, I, how do you even balance like, your I, life? Because you also in YPO with me, so the yes, young president yes, of love like, yeah. YPO. Yay. YPO is really a huge game changer. I, I'm very appreciative to yeah. work around with YPO for sure. So it's like, how do you even balance your life and work? Yeah. So you know, I astonishingly, I do feel balanced. Um, but what I've come to learn is that for me, balance doesn't mean 50, 50. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoy working and building right now. Like that's my priority. My companies are my priority right now. And so that's where I put most of my time, effort and energy. Um, however, like I learned this Sundays are my one day that mm-hmm. I don't schedule anything. I don't schedule business meetings, appointments, uh, phone calls, I don't, I don't schedule anything on Sunday. I want Sunday to be my one day that I don't set an alarm. Mm-hmm. I will sleep in um, and I'll go do something social. Like maybe I'll, I'll go to church. I'll go to brunch. Like yeah. it, Sunday is my day. Or if I want to do absolutely nothing. <laughs> Whatever wanna, it is. It's just like yeah, what Lisa wants. Exactly. Yeah. Sunday is the day, right? And mm-hmm. and for me, that's enough. Some people need less time. Some people need more time. Um, if I get my Sundays, I'm... I'm good to go for the rest of the week. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoy working Saturdays, um, oddly enough, but but I that's just how I'm wired. And Sundays are my one day that I'm like, I don't want to schedule anything. That's my day. And it's enough for me. So yeah. you have to figure out what's what's enough for you. Um, but you know, with everything that I have, everything's scaled at this point, right? My mm-hmm. oldest company is 10 years old, my youngest company is four years old. Mm-hmm. Like we've scaled now. So I'm not in startup mode anymore. And so as a result, I do have flexibility in my schedule, right? Right. I was just in Croatia for 10 days. Like, like I have flexibility in my schedule where I can take time to be away. And and, I was just down visiting my mom this past weekend, right? I can go see family. I can go travel internationally. I can travel domestically. I can, you know, go grab lunch with girlfriends in the middle of the day if I want, right? Like I'm in control of my schedule. Um, and I think that's like the ultimate flex when you just have that freedom to be able to pack your schedule however you'd like. And if that's with lots of work stuff, good. Like right. if that's what you want to do. Awesome. No, and then that's true. That leap, that kind of tie back to listening to your intuition and kind of know your body to see what you yeah, want. What right? works for you. What mm-hmm. works for you. It said, listen to what the society expecting out of you or what other mm-hmm. telling you. So you just have mm-hmm. to trust your body and, and there's no strict rule like 50 50 or whatever it is. I mean, if yeah. it worked for you Sunday, which is all day, and then you also get excited about building your empire. That's why I called it. I would say <laughs> building my empire. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love that. So then, hey, that's what that's what you want. That's what you like, right? So, yep. yeah. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for taking the time of your schedule to join me in this episode. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. I definitely have to meet up with you soon because I definitely want to yes. try this. Girl, yes, come out cupcake. here. Yeah. Cupcake. Girl, you, please, let me know. Let me know when. Yeah, and then, so everyone, please follow Lisa's social media and, um if you want to get great tip and just life wisdom and then her social media is awesome because I, I follow her and then I always like to see what she put in there and yeah. you're really good with social media by the way Lisa I don't know if you have somebody to do it for you or you did it yourself it's right on point because you because yeah. the <laughs> advice that you give is very direct and it's short and simple but I love it Good. Yeah. I'm so glad you get value out of it. Yeah, I, I just I run it myself. Um, oh wow! And yeah, I, I always have. Um, <laughs> no, but it's just it, like it's not. You know, social media. Let's face it, it's a marketing tool, right? Yes. Social media is a marketing tool. Um, so you have to decide how you want to use it. And I like to use my social media to share what I'm doing in business and hopefully sharing tips that are like helpful to other people. Yeah. That's how I use social media. So. No, and I love it because I really, I, I really thought your social media to give really good, simple tip and a right to the point. And, you know, maybe okay. we get, we get so spoiled with TikTok and all that. So it's like, oh, we totally. don't, <laughs> we don't have a, I have a really short attention span, but I love the fact <laughs> that every tip that you give is, is really quick and you can get to the point. 
So okay. yeah, well, I'm gonna, you. I'm, I'm, I'm you gonna put your social media handle or on our um, podcast. So then it's easy for all of everyone to follow you and, you know, get Perfect. some advice from you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Lisa. Okay, so hopefully Thank to you. see you soon. Okay, bye. 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 Lisa, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to join us on this episode again. Um, thank you all, listener, for joining us today. I hope you all enjoyed this episode with us because I have so much fun today, especially whenever we get to interview another kick-ass lady bosses. Please take a moment to check out Lisa's social media handle. I will put it in the description box for this episode. Stay tuned for my next episode, everyone. I'm your host, Evie Jane, for Evie Unbounded. Please go ahead and follow me on Instagram at E-V-I-E-J-E-A-N-G, E-V-J. Remember to subscribe, like, comment, and share.